So, you want a starship. But you don't have one. But you'll want one. But you can't afford a starship. You don't have the latinum to afford yourself a starship. Well, I've got another solution for you. Worry not. You could just steal it. Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today's topic was requested by Commander Philip Tai. He has been badgering me to make this topic for at least a year, possibly two years, I don't know. Time is funny and distorted, but he want, he, he thinks the Klingon Batleth is great and apparently I'm the guy to cover it, despite the fact that I've never swung a sword in my life. In any case, let's indulge him. So today we're going to be discussing boarding actions, boarding, whether that is to destroy an enemy ship, to seize an enemy ship, whatever you want to do. We're going to go through the various minutiae of boarding actions and, uh, and you know, what with all is involved. So without any further ado, I think we should get into it. So in terms of boarding actions, there's basically four simple steps. It really boils down to four simple steps. And with these four simple steps, these are foolproof steps, by the way, absolutely foolproof method, will work 100% of the time, 60% of the time works every time, trust me. If you do the thing, and you do it right, and you don't fuck it up, then it works. It just works, and you'll have yourself a starship. Trust me on this. Right, so step one is to, well, choose your target. What ship would you like? And, you know, whatever means do you have to seize that vessel. Step one is to lower its defences, either by deception or by force. Now, of course, you know, sometimes you're very you're in a very privileged position and you have a ship with superior firepower. Of course, if you have superior firepower, you can just knock down the shields and boom, we're through to the next level. That's not always possible, though. Although, saying that, two Borel-class Bird of Prey are fully capable of breaking the shields of a galaxy class. You heard me right. Two Borels. Not Kovorts, Borels. That's from Next Generation episode The Rascals. Even though, okay, they use the visual of a Kovort to make it seem slightly less preposterous. But the dialogue specifically says Borel, so I'm going to treat it as if those are Borels. We'll, we'll ignore that one, but, you know, there are many ways of lowering the enemy defences, and not all of them necessarily involve just shooting at them. Sometimes it's just a matter of opportunity. As I recall in the episode One Little Ship, there's basically just the Defiant is out in open space doing science, for some reason. The Defiant is doing science. I don't know, maybe they were going to send the Equinox to do it, but then it disappeared, <coughs> so I guess now the Defiant has to do it. But in that episode, the Defiant is just out on its own doing a bit of science and some Jem'Hadar come across it and they just take the opportunity, Defiant's on its own, not really paying enough attention. Three Jem'Hadar fighters, bang, 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 drop the shields, beam aboard. Actually, if we're talking about the use of force and the use of shock, shock and surprise can get you a very, very long way in defeating the enemy's defences before they even have a chance to raise them. So that's partially why you can be very quickly boarding an enemy ship, is if they're not even expecting to be attacked, their defences will likely be down, and it makes the job so much easier. Other things you can do include various forms of deception. Take Star Trek V, for example, that terrible, terrible movie. But, yeah, just smuggle yourself aboard a shuttle, and, you know, maybe feign an accident. You know, oh no, we've we've taken a hit to our engine, we need an emergency landing. They do that all the time in blummin' Star Wars and they get away with it, so that's a perfectly acceptable way. Maybe you've been following this ship for a very long time and you actually plant something for them to find. It's what the Ferengi did in Acquisition, the Enterprise episode Acquisition. They, they were following the Enterprise probably for a while and thought, oh... The, these people will just bring any old crap onto their ship if it looks fancy and old. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put something on a planet that we know that they're going to visit, and they'll bring it onto their ship, and we'll use it to knock them out. 
with a tranquilizer gas, a Trojan horse, if you like. And the other thing is to just kind of go blazing in and, and you know, give them minimal time to think about it. If you say, ah, we're being chased by a Klingon bird of prey. We need to get in your shuttle bay. Let open the shuttle bay doors. Quick, quick, quick. They've got very minimal time to think about it. And they might just go, okay, yeah, get in, get in, get in. You know, and then they'll worry about what happens after that later. But however we've achieved it, we have now lowered the enemy defenses and you're either aboard or in the process of boarding. So we'll now cover the process of boarding. So we kind of already covered the deception part with shuttles, but there's other ways you can use shuttles. So, you know, yes, shuttles can be used to infiltrate, but you can also use them as a far more direct method of boarding as well. Obviously, it's a little bit more risky, but it breaks up the usual pattern. You see, if you just board using transporters, well, A, the enemy can use transport inhibitors, and frankly, the fact that they don't install transport inhibitors onto starship bridges is is absolutely astonishing given how frequently hostiles will beam just directly to the bridge because of course they would if they could why don't you you know remove that possibility for the enemy that ultimately comes down to a problem with transporter technology and a seeming lack of counters a lot of the time and also surely if you're beaming onto a ship the enemy can just as easily beam onto your ship or beam you back to your ship and it's a, and then it becomes then it becomes a little bit ridiculous. You're like beaming, you you're just juggling this this boarding party as you're beaming it on and off of the ship. So transporters are a little bit yeah, like that. You know, you have them, but chances are your enemy also has them. Shuttles offer you a bit of a different opportunity. A, you can go by the shuttle bay. That's an obviously very easy parking job. Alternatively, you can magnetize to the hull and then either EVA or just cut open a hole, a hole in the ship and drop in through there. That has the advantage that it's very unpredictable and, you know, potentially you could bring with you your own transport inhibitor, you know, on the shuttle. And also shuttles give you a bit more of a reliable egress. I haven't necessarily covered egress specifically, but Shuttles are a very, very reliable way of egressing from an enemy ship, as opposed to a transporter where it could be cut off at any moment. So there's good reason to actually use shuttles, at least supplement your boarding action with shuttles and docking. I mean, docking was also very, very common back in the 22nd century. We see it done a lot in Enterprise. It's surprising how cooperative the Enterprise is, but then again, tractor beams were probably at play, they probably disabled your engine a little bit. But equally, it can go very wrong, as shown in the episode Twilight, where the Zindi are boarding Enterprise, and Captain T'Pol then rams that ship into the other Zindi ship. Okay, yeah, it takes out her nacelle, but it also knocks out two Zindi ships. So, yeah, putting your ship in such direct threat by directly docking is very... It's treacherous ground. I would say transporters and make sure to supplement that with a backup in the form of shuttlecraft and probably a lot of shuttlecraft and that's another problem that you do run into. Most ships don't actually carry that much in the way of shuttlecraft, certainly not small ships. Yes, if we're talking about stuff like the Galaxy and the Dideridex and the, and the Negvar, you can put a lot of shuttles in those ships, but, you know, we look at the, particularly the 23rd century, most ships are only carrying a couple shuttles, and that's about it. Which means that it's actually very difficult to, you know, support an effective boarding action through shuttles alone. And ultimately, that does also reflect the importance of having an available crew for boarding action, unless you want to leave your ship undermanned and under defended. Beaming in anywhere, just as a final note, yes you can beam in on the bridge. That seems to vary in its effectiveness. Sometimes you'll beam onto the bridge and the enemy will just sit there gawping, won't have even equipped themselves with any weapons and you can just go bang bang bang, you know, take out all of the enemy crew, seize control of the bridge. Alternatively, like in the way of the warrior in, on Deep Space Nine, uh, you will beam into the bridge or the op center and immediately be mowed down with phaser fire. So it's a bit hit or miss. And depending on what your objective is, I would just suggest just beam into the cargo bay. It's, it's easier. It's so much easier. So step three is to subdue the crew. 
Now, there are many ways you can do this through batleths, knives, guns, whatever you have, disruptors, phasers, whatever you have to hand. There's also some very interesting other weapons that you can use in... And I know that this is not Star Trek, but I'm going to cite the example because it's one of my favorite episodes. Um, in the Doctor Who story, Resurrection of the Daleks, it's a Peter Davidson story. And it starts with this very exciting uh, boarding action where, the, where these humans in the future are defending against a Dalek boarding action. Anyway, in that episode, the first Dalek attack fails because the humans have mined the corridor. So the human commander suggests that they use his plan, where they will actually use poison gas. The Daleks and the Dalek troopers are unaffected. Presumably the Dalek troopers have, you know, masks or something, something that defends it. The, the humans themselves have masks, but not everyone, not everyone is carrying them or is able to put them on quick enough. And so they all die horrifically to this horrific Dalek gas. But it does raise the question of using poison gas in your boarding action as the Ferengi used in Enterprise. Realistically, that shouldn't work because, you know, a ship has a controlled environmental system and it's not going to take a genius to... Hopefully you have an environmental systems officer who's monitoring this stuff and they see, oh, there's some poison gas released in this section. I better close it off or, you know, purge it from the, from the ventilation system. So something like poison gas, very unlikely to work. Um, certainly with a more advanced starship. And could be very easily contained within something as simple as a as a force field. It's an interesting idea, but doesn't hold that much water. I think ultimately, yeah, it's going to come down to a hard fight with, with batleths and disruptors and phasers and knives. Now, speaking of batleths, I must finally indulge Philip Ty and explain to you the wonders of the Batleth. You see, basically, the, the as he constantly explains to me, he has said this to me many, many times on Discord and I want to die. Um, basically, it is a giant two-handed knuckle duster. You, with the way it's held, you basically are just punching with it. And the two ends on which you punch are very pokey. It also has the advantage in that it will catch enemy blades. It's not necessarily going to slash the enemy, and it's not really made for slashing attacks, because the Batleth is fundamentally um, a punching and uh, lunging weapon. Its, its axis of movement is straight. You're not having to, you know, draw a big diagonal line across the your enemy where you have to and you where you have to worry about you know hitting one wall hitting the other hitting the other okay it's not perfect you know the perfect thing would be something like a like a rapier or epe some kind of uh small pointy st sword which is just for poking people with i think a poking device is ultimately you know potentially superior that's a debate if someone with a batleth and someone with a poking device want to get together and and see how that plays out please do and film it and let us all know how this would actually work but there's a good deal of of use in the batleth it also allows for um grappling it does actually facilitate that quite well it's the movements are very tight you can use a batleth at pretty much any range down to it being pressed right up against you you don't need to necessarily wind up as you do with certain kinds of sword. So, there. That's my segment on the Batleth. Are you happy now, Philip? Will you leave me alone? Please. Please. He's going to hit me with the Lurper next time. Right. So, we have now subdued the crew with whatever means we have available to us. And now we must seize control of the ship systems. Now, this is where most of the bad guys fall down because most seem to fail utterly to secure control of ship systems. And, you know, that's because, well, oddly enough, people who have starships are very keen to for them to not end up in the wrong hands. So that's why it's very difficult to gain computer control. But generally the problem seems to be that none of the people who think to board a starship 
think to bring their own techie with them who know how to, you know, get into the, the computer controls of the ship and make it work for their benefit. I think the only people who I can think of off the top of my head are the ones from Starship Mine, the the, the Die Hard episode. Uh, those are the only ones who I think get some degree of control over the Enterprise's systems, but even then, that's when most of the ship is shut down. The Borg fail to do this successfully. Apparently the Borg don't understand how to bypass a f- simple firewall. But that seems to be where most slip up, and I would say definitely bring a techie, bring a slicer, someone who is capable of hotwiring the starship. Do not rely on the crew to operate that ship for you, because that will inevitably lead to them launching a counterboarding action and you getting chucked off the ship. So, yeah, bring your own techies with you. So, finally, I want to just touch on some basic notes on how the different military powers employ boarding actions, because I think this is very interesting. You see, the Klingons have a preference to board early. They will use it very, very, very early in an engagement if they can. And it is largely actually in support of the overall attack. It's not necessarily the primary objective of the attack. The boarding is actually part of the attack. Boarding an enemy ship to disrupt and distract the crew. You might say in the example of Deep Space Nine being boarded that they were going for the um, Detapa Council. But if that was the case, then why are there all these other boarding parties on the promenade, in the ops room, everywhere? It's because they're ultimately working to disrupt the operation of the station. And that's a very useful way to employ boarding action, is in disrupting the activity of the enemy ship while you continue to attack it. The Ferengi will generally only board once it's safe. I take the Enterprise episode Acquisition as a better example of what a Ferengi boarding action would look like as opposed to Rascals. And that's partially because the TNG didn't fully understand what Ferengi were, whereas by the time we get to Enterprise, we've had all of Deep Space Nine's Ferengi, and it's like, yeah, these are not people who are going to board a ship if there's any potential that there's a, there's a greeting party waiting for them. No way, thank you, sir. I know. Beam in the Norsicans instead. You know, they'll find something else to do. Uh, with the Federation... Uh, it is actually very common practice for them try, to try and covertly board and disable vessels. They they are very, very well versed in those kind of operations. I think that almost came back from um, the 22nd century, where often enough, Enterprise would come across a derelict alien vessel and go, oh, what happened here? Let's get aboard it and try and get it working again and see what, what happened to the, all the, the crew and possibly salvage it. They, they leave that part out of the episode. Finally, with the Romulans, their basic attitude is we'll subdue the ship completely and then board it and potentially seize the prize if there's anything worth having there. You know, if there's some juicy Federation secrets, then then we'll board it. But otherwise, we'll, you know, blow it to smithereens and or, you know, disable it and then haul it back to Romulus with a tractor beam. So the Romulans have very little interest in actually boarding for its own sake. So, in conclusion, boarding, in its basic essentials, is actually very simple. It's a very simple four-step process. But it hinges on very decisive and aggressive action. Transporters do actually help make boarding actions more viable in Trek, I would be shocked and and gobsmacked if the people that originally invented transporters were not fans of boarding actions. That seems like a very natural thing to explain the development of the original transporter was that it was made by somebody who really liked doing boarding actions. So that's probably a topic for another day. So I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for the video suggestion, Philip. I hope it was to your satisfaction. Uh, and if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know in the comments. And if you can, super thanks is very much appreciated. I'll see you all next time.